It's a compact SUV, it's very well priced, and it's electrified. Yes, the GWM Havel Jolion Hybrid ticks a lot of boxes, but is it worthy of your consideration list? Let's check it out and find out. A little background here. Great Wall Motors is one of China's biggest automakers and Havel is its SUV and crossover brand. The Jolion has been around in Australia as a petrol turbo since 2021. The hybrid is a brand new arrival and it sits at the top of the range. Its drive away price is very competitive against other hybrids like the larger Toyota RAV4 and smaller Honda HRV. The hybrid uses the same conservatively styled sheet metal as other Jolions, but you can pick it out by what Havel calls its star matrix grille, its own LED headlights with blue accents, redesigned front and rear bumpers, and this high mounted rear spoiler. The Havel Jolion Hybrid is powered by a combination of 1.5 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine and an electric motor. They can run together or separately depending on the driving conditions. The transmission is a CVT with a high and low gear and it only drives the front wheels. There's no all wheel drive option. The result of all this is a pretty low fuel consumption claim, which naturally drops to zero if you're driving on electricity alone. Of course, you don't plug this car into a power socket, instead the small high voltage battery is recharged by the petrol engine and braking. Get in the Jolion Hybrid and it looks more expensive than it actually is. The cockpit is modern and minimalist. Surprisingly, considering this car is based on the latest GWM platform, it does not have reach adjustment of the steering wheel. The driver's seat is pretty unsupportive and doesn't have lumbar adjust. The synthetic leather trim looks and feels like cheap vinyl. There's no shortage of storage opportunities in the Jolion Hybrid. There's even a handy slot to pop your phone. Less convenient are the USB plug-in points down low on the left side of the centre console. The 12.3 inch touchscreen makes quite the statement sitting up on the dashboard. It's got very good clarity, you can fit plenty of information on it when you need to and it also adapts well to a split screen. But the width makes it hard to reach controls on the far side. You get cabled Apple CarPlay and Android Auto with the Jolion Hybrid but there's no embedded sat nav or digital radio. You get wireless smartphone charging but the pad is so shallow the phone can go flying in corners. Along with the touchscreen, there's a digital instrument cluster in this car, which is all great in theory, but in practice, there's lots of navigating through screens and submenus, which can be really distracting. Adding to the frustration, some of the features only work sporadically. For me, this is the major turnoff about the car. The Jolion Hybrid is quite good to see out of when manoeuvring and you also get the help of a 360 degree camera with multiple views and rear parking sensors. But no front parking sensors which seems a bit odd considering the Jolion Hybrid has a long list of high tech driver assist and safety features to keep you on the road. But be aware that because of its unique drivetrain this vehicle misses out on the 5 star ANCAP rating the orthodox Jolion has recently been awarded would have to go through its own crash test process to obtain a rating. Despite its compact dimensions, the Jolion Hybrid has truly impressive space in the rear seat. There's plenty of headroom despite the panoramic sunroof, and as you can see, no problems when it comes to legroom. Adding to the welcoming nature of the rear seat, there are direction adjustable aircon vents, two USB outlets, big door bins that will swallow bottles, two seat back pockets and a fold down armrest with two cup holders. At 390 litres, the boot of the Jolion Hybrid is not the biggest in the class. In fact, it's 40 litres less than the petrol Jolion and that's because the high voltage battery for the hybrid system sits under the floor. Fold the rear seat down and boot space does expand to a useful 1,069 litres. 
But enough of the numbers, let's go and do some driving and see how the Jolion Hybrid behaves. Chinese cars have rightfully copped a drubbing for their woeful chassis tuning over the years. But it's fair to say the Jolion Hybrid demonstrates that progress is being made. Look, it's no Mazda CX-5, but there's no doubt someone with tuning skills has been involved here. The ride is mostly comfortable and quite controlled, the handling secure and the steering lightly coherent. There is a frustration here though, and that's the way cruise control sets an overly conservative speed limit when cornering. You can't switch off that function without switching off cruise altogether. That's unfortunate. That's not the only annoying thing about driving this car. There's no battery charge level to show how much electricity you've still got stored, nor can you manipulate the system to make it drive on electricity alone at slow speed. You just have to let the Jolion Hybrid's electronic brain decide which part of the powertrain is going to work when. But when the electric motor and the petrol engine are working together, there's enough oomph to handle any driving situation. But the high voltage battery is small and can pretty quickly run out of puff, leaving with a small petrol engine to drag along a sizeable car. The good news is the battery gets some charge back on board pretty quickly and when it does you can record some very impressive fuel economy numbers. The Jolion Hybrid comes with a 7 year unlimited kilometre warranty, service interval spaced at 12 months or 15,000 kilometres and a cap price service plan that comes out around $1,550 over 5 years. That's pretty competitive. There's no doubt the Jolion Hybrid underlines the startling rate of improvement of Chinese vehicles. It's high tech, has clean driving manners and presents a compelling value for money proposition. But along with the highs, there's some pretty obvious lows like the annoyingly complex controls. Look, the Jolion Hybrid is not the best compact SUV out there, but if you're shopping on a budget, it does merit your consideration. Then you might find the pluses outweigh the minuses. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos and let us know what you think in the comments below.